Hey guys, in this video, we'll add the ability to search for videos that are posted on the site. And to do this, we'll add a search bar to the nav bar, and then we'll set up to, once we uh, submit a search, it will take us to a different view that filters the videos based on that search query. So let's go ahead and get started building this. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead first and open up our text editor. Let's go to our navigation.html, and we'll add a search bar in here. So come up here, right above this unordered list, we will give, create a form, give a class equaling to form-inline my-2, my-lg-0. And then we'll give it a method equaling to get. And I'll come back and explain all this in a second, but for now I'm just going to type it in. We'll create an action. We'll add an action attribute, and then we'll give it a URL that we'll create in a little bit. And this will be URL video dash search. I'll we'll go ahead and close off that tag there. Close off this form. Now within this form here, uh, we need to add two things. We need to add an input and then a button. Uh, the input will just be a text field to type in our search query, and the button will be to submit the search. So we'll create a button, input class equals form dash control mr dash sm dash zero or dash two. And then we'll give it a type of search. And we'll give it a name equaling to Q. A placeholder equaling to search. And then we'll give it this equaling to search again. And then we'll give it finally a value. And we'll type value equals, pass in a variable. Uh, I'll put quotes around this though. And then within this, this, these uh, brackets here, we'll type request dot capital G E T dot Q. And now down here, let's go ahead and add our button. So we'll create a button. Uh, we'll give the class equaling to search dash button, which we will add to our CSS in a little bit. Let's go ahead and put this in double quotes though. Search dash button, just stay consistent. And then we'll give a type equaling to submit. And then we'll go ahead and we're going to go ahead and use um, an ion icon. So the same icon library we used to create the edit and delete buttons, uh, we're going to use that here to add a little magnifying glass. Uh, I think it'll look a little better than just having the word search there instead. So we'll just add ion dash icon. And we'll give it a name value. And this will be search dash outline. Okay, then we can close off this tag, close off the icon tag and then close off the button tag as well. Go ahead and save that. Uh, that's all we should need. Let's go ahead and add one more thing though. We'll go ahead here and we'll add a flexbox to this form so that we can make this input button show up next to each other. So we'll type d-flex and then flex-row to tell it we want it to, the flex direction to be a row instead of columns. Go ahead and save that. So in our input um, field here, we have a name equals q value right here. And so what this is for is we will have a value saved in our URL that will be Q equals whatever we typed in. So whatever we type in this form will be saved um, as Q equals in our URL. And that's what we'll access in our view to get the value um, that we want to search by. And then you look down here further, we have this value equals request.get.q. And what we're doing here is once we submit a request, normally the form will be cleared out emptied. We don't want that here. We want the search term to stay within the uh, the box, the input box, so the user can see what they search. It's just a little helpful to have it there instead of having it cleared out, um, so they know what they searched. Um, that's really it. That's all we're doing here. So now let's jump into our views to add the view to handle this request. So we scroll down here to the bottom. We'll go ahead and create a new class, and we will call it search video. We'll inherit from our view um, classes before, so we'll need to handle any get post request or delete or get post put delete methods that we would normally. And in this case, in our form, all we had here was just a get request up here. We'll just have just a get request, so all we need to handle is just a get request. So to do that, all we need to do is type get f get, pass in self, pass in request, pass in star. Args, passing star star quarks, uh, just like normal. 
And then now within here, the first thing we do is we need to get whatever we put into that Q value. So whatever we saved as our, whatever we typed in will be saved as Q in our request. So to get that, we can just type in query equals and then self dot request dot get in all caps and then get in lowercase and then we'll pass in Q into that. So now we just need to query our video model and get all the objects and filter it by whatever we, we put into this query variable here. And to do that, we can type query underscore list equals video dot objects dot filter. And then inside of here, we'll do something a little different. Uh, we're going to use a Q object to help filter by multiple things. So I could go here and just type something equals whatever to filter by, but I want to filter by multiple things. I like to filter by the title, uh, keywords in the description, and the username of who uploaded the video. So I think that would just be a little more helpful than just by searching only one of those um, different variables. And so to do this, we need to use our Q, this Q object. So up here, we'll need to import that. We will type in uh, from Django dot db dot models import q and now down here we can go ahead and use that so we'll go ahead and type q and then in parentheses we'll type whatever we want to search by so in this case it'll be title double underscore i contains equals query and then we'll go ahead and put a just a pipe here just to symbolize or and then we'll do a Q again and we'll put and we'll search by our description so we'll put description double underscore I contains equals query once again a pipe put in our Q and now we'll search by the uploader username so first we'll type uploader and then we want to get the username that's on this uploader object so we'll type double underscore username double underscore I contains equals query uh, and that's it that will search um, by whatever we typed in there if we if we put nothing in there it will just return all the videos and if we put whatever we put in there we'll search the title description uploader for see if it matches anything within there if it does it'll return that video within this query list and so now all we need to do is just create a context pass this query list into the context and then pass the context into the uh, the, the template itself. So we'll type context equals query underscore list and then query list query list and then down here we'll go ahead and do return render request comma and we'll do videos slash search dot html which we'll create this in a second as well. We'll do context to pass our context in there now too. And that's it. That's our whole view. Uh, so that's all we need to do to handle this. Uh, it's a pretty simple view, and this using this Q object makes it much easier to search um, all the different uh, parts of the video to figure out if it matches or not. Uh, now that's done, let's go ahead and create a URL for this. So in our URLs.py, I need to go ahead and import this new view. So I import search video. And now we need to go ahead and create a path. Uh, we'll put search slash, and this is just our base URL, so it'll be search slash, it'll be like uh, question mark, Q equals uh, whatever we search in animal. Like whatever we search here will show up like this. Um, we need to put just our base view, and then it will automatically append on the rest once we actually complete a search. And now we'll go ahead and just set it to our search video dot as view, like we would for a normal class view. We'll give it a name, and this name needs, needs to match what we put in our template. So we go back and check that real quick. Um, we put in our action here video dash search. So now we'll type video dash search, and that should be it. Now the last piece we need here is we need to add a, uh, a, a HTML template to load these videos. And really, it's going to be the exact same as our index. We're just going to change a couple small things. So if we op if we go create a new file in here. And we'll call it uh, just search.html, which needs to match what we put in our view. We'll go ahead now and grab our index. We'll go ahead and copy that. Go into our search.html and paste that. And now we can keep all this the same except for one small part. Object list needs to become query list, as that's what we called it um, in our context. 
and I'll leave object the same just to not change anything else. Now let's go ahead and open our browser and check it out. And now you'll see here we have our search bar and we have our button. Our button looks pretty bad right now because we haven't added any styles to it. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and do that real quick. Let's go ahead and jump into our text editor, go to our CSS file. And now down here, we're going to add two different styles. First, we'll just say one for our, our button, which we called, um, we call it search dash button. So let's go here and type dot search dash button. And these will be the styles for just for our button. But you also add some styles for when we hover over the button. So we'll do dot search dash button colon hover. And that will go within there. Let's start with just our top one here, just the regular button. Uh, first, we need to get rid of some of the basic default styles that buttons have. So first we'll do border dash zero or border colon zero and then we'll do background dash color and we want to remove the background color so we're going to do RGBA and just give it zero comma zero comma zero which is just black and then um, we give it, can give it an alpha value and we can give it one which would make it just a solid color or we can give it zero which is just a completely transparent color or any value in between. In this case we want it just to be transparent so we'll just give it just a zero value there. Uh, and that will just take away the color completely. Uh, and now we'll go ahead and give it a font size and we'll just do 1.5 REM and then we'll give it a transition and transition will just make it a little more smooth when we transition from the hover effects just to the regular button effects. Now within our hover button effects, uh, we're going to go ahead and just make the icon a little darker. So we'll do a color and we'll just do 555 for our color and give this also a transition of 0 0.3 seconds. Uh, and that's all we need there. We'll go ahead and save that, come back here, reload the page, and now you'll see our button looks much better when we hover over it and then change its color slightly just to give it a small effect when we uh, hover over it. Now let's go ahead and type something into our search field and see what happens. So I'll type test and do hit click search and now you'll see it did search it um, but both videos have tests in it so it brought both videos back up. Let's go ahead and type test video 2 and search that and now only one video is showing up. We can also search by the username so we can type uh, new user and search for that and now both videos come back up again. Um, so this is working great. That's all we really need to do um, to have everything working. Uh, this video is much shorter than the other ones, but I think this was a very important feature to add to this application. Um, but like always, the code will be in the description below. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.